Hello, reception year one and year two. Mrs. Marson here, and I am going to read today's story time story. So I hope you've had a busy day doing lots of home learning and maybe doing some reading yourself. And so now it's time to sit back and enjoy a story. Now, the story I have chosen for today is called The Cat Who Wanted to Go Home. Now, I've never read this story before, and so I'm very excited to read it. And the reason that I chose it is because I spotted that the author of this book was a lady called Jill Tomlinson. Now, Jim to Jill Tomlinson, even if I can say her name correctly, wrote a story called The Owl Who Was Afraid of the Duck, which I really, really like. And so I thought, if I like that story by Jill, then maybe I like this one too. So let's give it a go. Susie was a little striped cat. She lived in France with a fisherman who had four sons, four sons. Pierre was ten, Henri was eight, Paul was six, and Gabby was four. When they stood in a row, they looked like a set of steps. Gabby didn't know the proper way to stroke a cat. Most cats like being stroked from head to tail, the way the fur lies. But Gabby always stroked Susie backwards from tail to head. And Susie, well... She loved it. So that's introduced us to the main character in the story. Let's see what she gets up to. Okay, so, and don't worry, I will show you pictures. One day, Susie found a huge basket in a field. She climbed in, settled in the shade under a stalk. That was so hard. When she woke up, the basket was in the sky. There was a man with her. Hello, little cat, he said. You will have to come with me to England. Susie didn't want to go. She wanted to stay in France with all the boys. Oh, she wailed. She wanted to go home. And there is Susie up in the balloon, up in the sky, on her way to England. So Susie floated across the sea by balloon and landed in England with a bump. She jumped out of the basket and ran to the seafront. How was she going to get across all that water? A lady took her to an old lady she knew called Auntie Jo. Do you think you could look after this cat, she said. She must be lost. Of course, said Auntie Jo. She'll be company for Biff. Biff was Auntie Jo's new budgie who was just learning to talk. Auntie Jo put a saucer of milk so Susie said, thank you, in French. Merci. What a funny meow, said Auntie Jo. Merci, said Biff the budgie. Oh, clever Biff, Auntie Jo said. She stroked Susie. Susie purred, but it wasn't like her. She did miss Gabby stroking her the wrong way. And there's Auntie Jo. And there's Susie. And there, whoop. The next morning, Susie went to the beach. There was a man with a board going to the sea towards France. But what was this? Hold on a minute. One minute he was going to France, but now he's coming back. Susie ran to meet him. Do you want to come surfing with me? He asked. Me? Hey, Susie said. So she climbed on his board and they went out to sea and back and sea and back several times before Susie realised they were only doing it for fun. She had a lovely time, even if she didn't get home to France that day. And again, there's Susie having an amazing time on a surfboard. I've never seen a cat on a surfboard. Have you? <laughs> the next morning, Susie ran down to the sea. She saw a speedboat pulling a girl behind it. There was another girl getting ready to go. Susie jumped onto her shoulder. The girl was not pleased. Get off, she cried, but it was too late. Susie got one paw tangled in the girl's hair and hung on. Then their boat began to swerve. Ah, Susie wailed, making the girl lose her balance. A second later, her and Susie were in the water. And there you can see they are there. You can see Susie pulling on her hair. And to this side at the bottom, you can see them. Susie headed for the pier doing a catty sort of dog paddle. 
The crew in the boat came back to pick up the water skier. What happened to you? asked the driver. It was that wretched cat, she said. It was all its fault. What cat? said the man. I can't see any cat. She's swimming, look! She's nearly at the pier already. Susie climbed onto the pier. She dodged all the people and ran home. Auntie Jo rubbed her all over with the towel and gave her dinner. Mercy, Susie said, cleaning her whiskers. You do have a funny meow, Auntie Jo said. But you're a funny cat altogether. She stroked her and Susie purred. But she did miss Gabby, stroking her the wrong way. And there Susie is, thing dried off. she's going to try and get back next. Any guesses? Hmm. The next morning Susie ran down to the water's edge. There was a small boat and beside it was a great man. He was a channel swimmer. His wife was smearing him with greasy stuff to help keep him warm during his long swim. Susie wasn't very interested until she heard someone say, well good luck Jim, let's hope you get to France. It was hardly surprising that the man found a little cat swimming beside him. Susie held up her head with her ears, folded down to keep up the water, but she began to get very tired. Then she felt herself being scooped out of the water and wrapped up in a warm towel. She settled happily. Then the wind started to get up and the sea got rougher and rougher. The man found it more and more difficult to move forward. Susie couldn't believe it when she saw him being helped into the boat. And they turned round and headed back to England. Ah! Oh, Susie cried heartbroken. And there she is swimming next to the man and you can see the little rescue boat just at the top of the picture too. Oh, still no way to get back to France. The next morning when Auntie Jo got out her tricycle, Susie settled in the basket. Nothing Auntie Jo said or did would move her. So she cycled to the church at the top of the hill with Susie in the basket. Susie could see ships. She ran down a cliff path to the big quay. A smart motorboat was about to leave, so she jumped aboard behind a pile of rope. The boat took an admiral to an odd sausage-shaped ship. The sailors aboard were lined up, ready for inspection. The admiral strutted between them, and Susie trotted importantly behind him. The men were trying hard not to laugh and grin at Susie. It was not often that they got their uniform inspected by a cat. There you can see the important Admiral checking that all the sailors are smart and ready. And there's Susie. The Admiral went back to his motorboat to be taken ashore. The sailors rushed about slamming doors and hatches. Suddenly Susie was the only one left. But what was happening? The ship was sinking! What kind of ship do you think it is? Susie scrambled to the top of a tower thing, but that was sinking too. Inside the submarine, the captain took a last look through the periscope. Funny, he said. I can't see a thing. There seems to be something blocking it. Good heavens, said the first officer. The Admiral's cat. We'll have to go back to the surface. A sailor took Susie back to the quay and she ran back to Auntie Jo's house. Auntie Jo put some food down for Susie. Susie purred, but she did miss. Can you finish the line? She did miss Gabby stroking her the wrong way. The next morning, Susie said goodbye to Biff because she was sure she would get to France that day. Au revoir, she said, which is French for goodbye. Au revoir, Biff said. Clever Biff, au revoir. Susie and Auntie Jo pedalled down to the seafront. I suppose we will see you at supper, Auntie Jo said as she went into the baker's shop. Then Susie spotted a French sailor. She followed him to a big port. Then he turned into a large building. Oh, well, she didn't need him. One of the ships must be going to France. A car drew up near Susie. Is this the ferry to France? The driver said to a man in uniform. That's right, sir. Just keep straight ahead, said the man. And there's the long queue of cars waiting to get onto the big ferry. Hmm? The car joined a queue waiting to board the ferry. Susie ran along the queue looking for a car she could get inside without being noticed. She found the very one. The boot was tied half open with a rope, leaving room for her to curl up. Suddenly there was a great clanking noise as they went down the ramp into the hold of the ship. 
There was a lot of banging and clanging as people got out, slammed their car doors and disappeared through a little door in the side. At last it was open. Susie squeezed between the cars and made for the door. But there was a new noise. It was the ship's engines. They were off. Susie hurried up some steep steps and came out into a corridor. She went up some more stairs and came out on deck in the sunlight. She ran to the top of the front of the ship and sat there on a curled up rope, looking towards France. She was going home at last. A little girl came and sat with Susie. Look, look, there's France, she shouted. France! Susie could hardly believe it. Just then, a sailor saw her. What's that cat doing here, he asked. She's a stowaway. He reached forward, but Susie dodged him. He chased her all around the ship and back up on deck again. Soon all the children began to join in. They thought it was a wonderful game. Poor Susie, nothing must stop her now. And then you can see all the children on the ship having a great time chasing around. Let's hope Susie doesn't get caught. Then Susie saw the mast. She ran up it and clung at the very top. She stared around her. France was getting nearer and nearer, nearer and nearer. France and home. Then she saw something. In the sea ahead was a French fishing boat. And on the deck were four little boys that looked like steps. It was Susie's family. Susie leapt over the sailor's head, ran to the rail and dived in. And there you can see, just in that corner, Susie, Susie diving in. And you can see the four boys on the other boat. Oh, they've come to save her. She seemed to go a long way down in the green water. Then she came up to the surface, bobbing around like a cork. The children on the ferry pointed down to Susie. Cat overboard, they shouted. The French boys saw the children were pointing to something in the sea. In a few seconds, Susie was scooped up with a bucket. The children on the ferry cheered. Yay! Susie sat in the bucket, purring like a ship's engine. And there she is, being saved by her four boys. It's Susie, said Gabby. I knew she would come back. That evening in England, Auntie Jo was getting worried. No Susie. I wonder where she is, she said. Hello, said Biff. Au revoir. What did you say, Auntie Jo said. Clever, Biff. Now, where did you learn that, said Aunt Jo. Of course, she did have a funny meow. I wonder. And the French cat that Auntie Jo was wondering about, she was purring and purring as though she would never stop. Gabby, what was Gabby doing? What was Gabby doing that was making her purr? Gabby was stroking her the wrong way. Susie was home at last. And there she is on Gabby's lap. I did enjoy that story. I'm glad I picked to read another story by Jill Tomlinson. I hope you enjoyed it too. Take care everybody. Have a lovely rest of day. Bye.